Welcome back to Pikmin 3 Deluxe. Between now, or between the last mission and now, uh, Louie ran off because we hurt his feelings, so now we gotta go find Louie. I meant every word. I know you did, but it's... I'm not gonna take any of it back, either. No, also fair, also fair. I mean, he is kind of a an actual screw-up, so... And More even, like a loo up And even Olimar admits he's like, oh, I'll have to find Louie again. So, yes, I'm glad Olimar knows the score. Uh, I actually kind of really like this mission, not the story behind it, but the puzzle aspect. All you need to do is meet back up. That's it. You don't need to kill any enemies. You don't even need to pluck all these Pikmin that I'm plucking. You just need to find a way to bring the two captains back together in the mission ends. That's right. You don't need to kill anything. However, I am a fan of extracurriculars. <laughs> Jesus, Olimar. That's actually hilarious. The main thing you need is to blow up a bomb rock wall. And in order to do that, the two captains actually have to have to work together a little bit. I think Pikmin should work more like ants. The DreamWorks movie? I should, or, or like well, ants. Well, act, well, well, kind of yes, in a, in, a, in a way. I should be able to render like 500 Pikmin. Apparently, and this is also a translation from Did You Know Gaming, when they were about to do this on the Super Nintendo, and it couldn't render 100 Pikmin. So then, when they decided to bring it to the GameCube, they were able to render, like, 500 Pikmin, but it slowed the console down. So they stopped it at 100. Well, now we got the sexy Switch, and the Switch 2 that people swear is coming, I promise. Really, really, wink, wink. No, guys, my, my uncle at Nintendo told me. I think I recently heard that there's a... There, the Bloodborne remake is actually happening, and it's happening on PS6. Like, they, guys, they had to they had to rumor a whole new console just to get this off the ground. Come on now. I think my favorite thing is that you know the monkey paw curls and it's actually a mobile game. That's hysterical. <laughs> That's. <laughs> I mean, I've I've been burned by the monkey paw before. No worries, gamers. Every time you make a wish like that, the monkey paw finger curls. Mom, can I have some money for some blood bucks? <laughs> How the hell is that even going to work? Do you need to buy insight so you can see certain enemies and... Uh... Oh, God! Yeah, Bloodborne's fucky. It's got this insight meter that, uh... Alright, you're gonna be walking along on a random path and then you're just gonna get grabbed hey. by something you can't see and then you get transported somewhere else. You need 40 arcane to even see this thing. I mean, I'm just absolutely floored on what phones are capable of nowadays. The fact that we have Resident Evil 4 Remake on a phone... Got Death Stranding on a, on a phone. Is that, that right there is wizardry to me. Like, am I just... Am I just an old man and not realizing how powerful phones are? Like, the last time a, I thought a phone game was actually, you know, semi-decent, you had to have, like, a $2,000 phone. Mission's over, by the way. We did oh, it. Good, good job. Hi, right. Louie. Yeah. Mwah. <laughs> Actually, that's more realistic. <laughs> who, oh. did, who did the kiss? Who did the punch? You decide. Yes. <laughs> so for that one, you just need to get a really fast time. It's, yeah, it's easy. When I get you, I'm gonna just, just c c come in for a hug. Come in for it's a special hokatate hug. <laughs> This means hello and goodbye. Wow, he actually has to win him over with food. Oh, it seems a autocorrected rope to food. Hmm. <laughs> the leash is just a piece of rope that Olimar brought with him. Let's start the date. Day eight. Date. The eighth day. Dawn of the eighth day. What I'm saying is they need to, like, render 500 Pikmin, right? That would be cool. So you can climb them and shit. 
They create platforms, 3D shapes. Oh, what was that zombie movie called? World War Z? World War Z! Yeah, you know how they make a wall out of corpses? That's the only five seconds I remember from that movie I haven't even seen. It's about the only thing that matters, really. Because because I was like, wait, it's a fucking book. It's a joke book about how to survive the zombie apocalypse. Get the fuck out of here. I mean, I played the World War Z game, and it was good for the five minutes I played with friends at work. It was kind of okay. The zombie game that came a bit too late in the zombie game, I think. A lot of games came out <laughs> a bit late for the, for the zombie games. Uh, Days Gone came out late for the zombie craze. Luckily, zombies have kind of slowed down a little bit in recent, recent years. I just kind of like it when the old boys that did zombies right the first time actually come back and say, Cracks Knuckles, alright, let me show you how it's done. I think the last good zombie movie I saw was Train to Busan. Then they did a sequel, and, well, you don't need to see that, it's fine. Train to Busan 2. Nah. Even deadlier. Peninsula. What? Because then it stops being about the zombies and starts being about the human complex that they go at the end of the movie. And, eh. Okay, I know zombie narratives have to go with the human element just to see how people react to the world-ending stimuli that we have to deal with now. It always the same fucking way, though, every single time. Every time. Well, I'm just thinking, like, how do you change that? How do you change the formula? I mean, you'd have to go, like, balls out crazy, right? Especially this day Why would you age? want to go crazy in fiction? No way. Well, I mean, like, you, you got the thing where, you know, the, the the gruff badass dude, all of a sudden he's a he's a son of a bitch because, you know, there's zombies to my children or, or something like that. Or, or, or it's always like, you know, it's like they, they come to this complex and it's like, hello, I am a person that you can trust. I'm the I'm the owner of this establishment. And then you find out, <laughs> well, I, I cannot see, be trusted. Well, you see, uh, with, for certain people, they only have rights. And the longer you're here is when you have them. So you guys get to hang out in steerage for a few years and then... Maybe if you're good enough and work hard enough, you'll be, you'll uh, get earn enough to be pack mules. That is, if you guys survive. So there was a time where I was watching The Walking Dead, since it had kind of finally slowed down in releasing seasons. And I'll give them this: there are a few plot lines that were really good, and then just all of the sudden. Like, waking up to a sore throat, it just all of a sudden stopped being good. <laughs> I should hate that. I fucking hate that! show starts sucking. It's just... It, it was immediate! And I can tell you exactly where it got bad! When did it get bad? When Negan showed up! Ah. Uh. And he's actually a really cool character! But after he shows up, actually, after he actually, like, shows his actual face, and the character dies, it's just like, well, this isn't fun anymore. <laughs> Took the fun out of it. What do we do now? Oh, we added a, we added a rogue element. You see, ooh, he, he's unpredictable. Now no character is safe because he could just show up and kill him. Isn't that fun? Isn't that great? Isn't that a gripping drama about the human condition? I will say one of the plot lines I did enjoy in The Walking Dead is when they actually find a place that has giant walls to protect from the walkers, has water, has heat, has food everywhere. It's the perfect paradise, and immediately the group goes, okay, where's the bullshit? We've fallen for this before, where's where's the bullshit? And basically they say, as, as long as you play nice, help out, you can stay. We even have a house for you. It's awesome. And I didn't buy that for a second, but it was 100% true. And then uh, people realize, well, this wall is not going to stay up forever. We can't just, like, you know, kick back and relax and think, you know, the end of the world has subsided. They're going to break in eventually. Something, Somebody's going to slip up. Something's going to happen. Zombies will happen. Is this the series finale? No. Then how is this going to break? Basically, Rick goes, you need to fortify your defenses because if you just sit here and let the wall take care of this... Something's gonna get in, and it's going to basically die overnight. And wouldn't you know it, about a couple hours after he gives that warning, a couple walkers get in, and he goes, I told you! 
so then they fortified their defenses, and that's when the saviors come in, and then kind of downhill from there. Right? <clears throat> it's always the same dynamic, and over it, uh, boring. Blah. I do think one, like I just want to put put a study on, and now that we have VR technology, this might actually work. Actually put those people in those scenarios and see what happens. Just from a psychological standpoint, what do people do? That, to me, sounds intriguing. Have you ever read a book called Fahrenheit 451? Heard of it, never read it. Is, hmm. it, is it the exact same thing? It, it's, a book, it's a book written in the 60s, and uh, it is a pretty bleak and somewhat timely prediction about how the future will look. Ooh! My favorite one is where the the wife of the of, of our uh, narrator here has got these three gigantic screens in her living room. Oh. Different programs. <laughs> and as I sit at my computer desk, that has of course my main monitor and of course my side monitor, and then yep, I look over yep. and I see my television over here that has my games on it. Not to mention my other computer behind me that's got a monitor back to back on there. Not to mention Violet, who sometimes has their their laptop up there. I just can't help but feel like it's a little bit on the nose. Consume media. Consume all the media. We still got some cool things going on here in our current day. It is getting a little weird, but we still got some cool stuff, and I'm enjoying it. You just gotta keep yourself human. Speaking of which, there is a VR game I want you to try. We've been talking about zombies, and there's one that actually does extremely well, because they change up the formula by doing something that should have been obvious to every other zombie game creator. You can't move. You are right here. You have an entire subway station around you. Things are happening. You can still turn around. Things can still attack you from behind. But the fact that you can't walk out of the way... I don't know. I just think it's really cool. It's the limitations. Yeah. Create fear and tension. And I really wish it would have been turned into a full game, but even the devs are just like, nah, we just wanted to have some fun. Here you go, you can play it for free. So I don't think VR is going to be, you know, this big thing. Oh, and it's a huge toy. It's a big toy, it's a novelty, it's like 3D. Like buying a Tesla. Yeah. It's a big old toy. Or an Apple Vision Pro. <laughs> Dude, do you want to try driving a Tesla while uh, wearing an Apple Vision Pro? If I want to look the, like the biggest tool of the 21st <laughs> century, you bet I do. While also programming AI and buying NFTs? Holy shit! <laughs> Fucking thousand dollar Yeezys and the <gasps> Oh my god, give me the brand stuff! I'm not interested in the Vision Pro at all whatsoever. It, it does not interest me. It's like, hey, pay, you can pay $3,500 to make everyday things cooler, but way harder. Sold. Where do I sign up? It's like, I miss the days where my phone used to have actual fucking buttons on it. I miss those days. Why, well, you my, know... my favorite phone had, like, a thing where you could, like, pull out this, 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 uh, this flip out keyboard, you could tap on that. that yeah. Man, that felt good. Man, that felt great. I loved it. What's the matter? You don't like having a computer with a phone app on it? But no, it's, I mean, I've, I've had to adjust to these soap bar, these, uh, soap bar designs. That's, that's what they're called, I suppose. They are. I've had to get used to it, and as the screens got bigger, they got easier for me. And now, you expect me to get a $3,500 fucking set of goggles, so I don't even- So I don't even have that? I'm yeah. just tap- I'm just tapping away at, at empty air, hoping that maybe that was the V key? I- The visual imagery that came to my mind when I saw the Apple Vision Pro was from the PC game Ripper. And how a lot of people went to the virtual world basically hooked up to a bunch of tubes and a giant headset, and they were just like, WOW, LOOK! <laughs> I was just like, yeah, that's Apple Vision Pro right there. <laughs> look at the- look at the graphics, man! I don't know, a, a lot of the tech that everybody seems to think is the huge next best thing is just too young. Like, even VR. VR's been out for a few 
years at this point, and it's still not grasping its full potential. It's just a, it's a novelty, is all it is. And I, I kind of love the novelty, that's why I got the cheapest headset in the game. But I've seen what some of what Valve's headset can do, and that right there is sorcery. Yeah, it's Valve. These guys are magicians when it comes to game design and game philosophy. I, I don't know how they do it. Not but... every game dev has that level of artistry, though. Correct. Now that not, that... Ev not every game is worthy of that level of artistry. And that's actually a full boardroom full of oh, full of devs pulling Half Life Alex out of nowhere. Hey, good for you guys. You actually made a reason to buy your hardware. Like just watching people play it, the fact that they can move individual fingers. I don't know, it just looks cool. The fact the fact is, what if I just want to sit down and play Tetris? Uh, d definitely not on a overpriced headset, Just get, sure. Just get my Switch out, throw up a uh, Tetris, uh... <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Throw up! <laughs> yeah, that's great. Yeah, that's great. So I'll turn on my Switch. Ah, there we go, there we go. Keep it in my hand, not, not, not throw it up. Not throw up. <laughs> just throw on, uh... Tetris the Grandmaster, just play some Tetris on there. I don't need to put on a... Don't need to put on a big headset. Don't need to have, you know, like... Can you play Tetris on, 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 on the Oculus? Whatever no. you got? No. Well, what's the point, then? I can play Resi 4 in the most cumbersome and uh, tense and difficult to most play to play way ever, I guess. I guess okay. Well. So, from my experience with VR... Some things, again, you are correct, it's based on the dev. So Resident Evil 4 VR is one of the most intense experiences I've ever had while playing the game. But it's all it's also made me motion sick. So, like, give and take. Like, I actually have to sit down while playing VR. I cannot be standing. Yeah, well, I can sit in whatever dumbass position I want to when I'm playing video, you know, regular video games. <laughs> Upside down, backwards. I don't sit in chairs correctly all the time. No, me neither. Uh, I mean, you see how we're both sitting on my couch here is just kind of... I mean, yeah, no. It, uh, p posture? What the hell is that? Yeah, who cares? We're, we're gamers. What is, is posture? That, is, is that some kind of medicine? I, I, don't, <laughs> I don't take that. No thanks. <laughs> I'm not a posture taker. I kind of like this mission a lot. It's a nice little challenge right before you hit the grand finale. You need to carry this ship part all the way to the end, which, by the way, we're at the end. Yay. But you have a limited number of Pikmin. When you start out, you only have ten, I think, and you have to build your numbers based on what you find in the field. And, you know, if the monsters kill them, they're gone. And the only way to get them back is if you find them on the field. So, I just thought that was really cool. Again, nice challenge for right near the end. I don't want challenge. I want everything to be easy and handed to me. I wish to play Tetris. I wish for the Pikmin to do everything for me. I think they could. I just want to press a button that says don't die, and then they just win the game for me. Do you remember that episode of Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends where uh, uh, they found the scribbles? And each scribble can only do one thing. I imagine those would be like Pikmin. Uh, <laughs> uh, it was a good show, but whenever I think of Foster's Home, it's usually just more ugh than anything fond. I still have fond memories of it. I've got some as well, but they all kind of wash away when fucking Cheese shows up. <laughs> we moved to be on different humor wavelengths, because I always thought <laughs> Cheese may be like... <laughs> Guilty laugh or something like that. Cheese made me realize maybe I don't need to watch cartoons anymore. <laughs> I like cereal. <laughs> yeah, big big laugh. Wow, doho, man. Don't I be hating. I just I just can't hold myself in when it comes to the humor stylings of Mr. Cheese. <laughs> My preteen years were a black. Or not preteen years. Oh my god! My thirteen to fourteen was great. <laughs> then I got to high school and everything got hard. Last mission. Finally. I mean, yeah! I mean, I mean y yay. Yeah. The last of our parts, and they gave you some bosses to fight. Woo! Let's fight bosses. The platinum medal makes you royalty. 
I will be royalty, Mr. President. And then I'll never have to see you again. You're fired! I have that power. I'm Olimar! The power. This is also a really fun mission, because they give you a limited number of Pikmin, and say, Alright, defeat the bosses, get your ship parts, get out of here. I get weary when the game is this direct. Yup. Because the game is kind of, it's, it's got kind of this, uh, almost random, haphazard kind of, you know, blah, whatever. You know, it's, 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 it's natural. Things are kind of tucked in here, little, little pockets here. But when things are directly laid out in front of you like this, it's time to get worried. Mm-hmm. Oh, I love it. Nothing will ever uh, make me forget the first time I fought the final boss of Pikmin 1 and how it took an entire day to unlock the arena and it took me an entire day to whittle down the boss's health to the three-quarter mark and I ran out of days and had to and decided to start the game all over again because I thought, wow, I won't be able to do any... I won't be able to beat it. Shoot! Better luck next time, champ. You stuck with it? I would have given up long after that. I'm very stubborn for select games. I don't know if you figured that out about me. It's like, I played Pikmin th I played Pikmin 1 on the original GameCube. I got pretty far, and but then I ran out of days at the very end of the final boss, and then I said, fuck that game forever, and I never played another Pikmin game for as long as I lived. So I think the other thing that made me enjoy the games I ended up enjoying is limited budget. What I bought was what I got. What I got for Christmas is what I had for the entirety, entire lifespan of that console. That's, that's how it is sometimes. You know, you're yeah. a kid. Yeah, so getting Pikmin 1 and Pikmin 2 within a couple years of one another, and those being, like, the only things I could play unless I wanted to play Sunshine for a fifth time. I mean, I can't judge. I saw a thing on, on Twitter. It's, uh, it's asking, uh... What's a game that's critically panned, but you seem to love? Oh, and, I love those questions. And, and, and uh, the first thing that popped to my mind is the only correct answer, Shadow the Hedgehog. <laughs> yes. I actually remember when you answered that, I was like, yeah, that's what's up! <laughs> but it's Sonic with the gun! I know, we wanted that in I 2005. <laughs> he, he says curse words! It's awesome! Yeah, it's great. It's only, it's only meant for 15-year-old boys! Guess what I was back then! <laughs> Yeah, I've not, I I think I'll, I'll always be a child at heart because when I play Nintendo games that remind me of days in the past, I'm just like, hell yeah, I'm there. I think our differentiating uh, game uh, taste comes into the, the big uh, RPG that we're playing right now the, from Sega that came out at the beginning of this year. You want to know what's funny about that? Yeah. I saw a uh, I saw a post uh, speaking of speaking of Twitter, and uh, it was the most on the nose post I had ever seen. It said, um, the, there are two types of, there are two types of, um, Persona fans. And it showed an image of Danganronpa, and it showed an image of Yakuza. And, and it said, Persona fans will only play one of these, not both. <laughs> I was like, holy shit, that's me and UDJ! Oh my god. I was like, holy shit! Oh my god. That is so on the nose, I can't believe it! Oh my god. <laughs> Oh, Jesus. Isn't that crazy? Holy crap. <laughs> I have... I am in this image, and I don't like it. I'm feeling attacked. <laughs> I mean, how much Yakuza have you played? <laughs> Zero. Zero. Yeah, 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 most of the games. I, I almost have all of them. It's stupid. It's stupid that I own all of them and I haven't even touched them. And I've, I've played Danganronpa 1 and 2, and I refuse to play 3. Uh, that's good for you, good for you, you made a good choice. I think I, I think I did. I mean, I mean, you can also start the Yakuza series if you want to. I could, yeah. I mean, do you have anything else going on in your life? Nah. Like, <laughs> you know, job, family, other games. <laughs> a little, a little. I mean, if you want to start the Yakuza series, we can't do this anymore. <laughs> We're gonna have to give this up to play Yakuza. <laughs> Bo boss, I can't come in today. I'm playing Yakuza. What? Uh, oh, okay. Uh, wait, which one? No, uh, Yakuza Zero. Ah, uh, good place to start. Okay, we'll see you in a month. Yeah, because I know that that game has stolen your life away. Like, I, I thought I couldn't get a hold of you when uh, Tears of the Kingdom came out. I, I, can, I can get a hold of you when you 
blink from playing Infinite Wealth, all of a sudden you snap back to reality. There's so much to do in that game, though. I love it! The difference is, is that Persona 3 is a game for high schoolers, and Infinite Wealth is a game of 40-year-olds. I will say Persona 3 did give me that that hit of nostalgia that took me back to high school, unfortunately. But but no, it was one of those, I heard some music and I was like, oh god, there I am again. I think I'll get there too. But no, I'd, I'd wait for a price drop. I, I definitely be, Because I know you. Yeah. I've known you long enough to know that this is a a discount game for you. This, this is not a uh, $70 game for me. It's no, like, no. 40 maybe. Maybe 40 Nah, get, grab it on Black Friday when it's like Twenty, thirty dollars. Again, because I know you. Good, good call. Good call. I think we've actually gotten to that point. I, I think I'll be done with Infinite Wealth by the time Black <laughs> Friday rolls around. So that's so perfect. Oh my God. You, has UDJ been in a coma this entire year? Nah, nah, Infinite Wealth. Hey, you gotta understand, it's just Infinite Wealth. I don't mind losing entire months to games. That means they've that they've engaged me. Yeah. God, I can't wait to get to Pikmin 4 so I have an excuse to lose my life again. I love though, I love playing games out of spite sometimes. It's like spite plays are fun. It's like I was like, I don't care about you. You're only gonna give me the platinum, and then I'm gonna forget about you forever. Anyway, I'm playing Root Film right now. I saw that the other day, and I was like, Well, that's not for fun. It's so boring. <laughs> God, it's a fucking. Bo it's for a, for a ghost mystery novel kind of series. It's so boring. Because half of it is like, we're going to go down to the shrine today. Oh, hello. This is the director of the museum of the shrine oh, there. Oh, wow. Hello there. What's going on? What's it? Well, you see, we, in, we, oh. or, it's, 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 I'm just skipping through all this. It's so fucking boring. Yeah, spite plays are so fun. And I, I have now learned to tell what is your spite play. But we did it. Yay! Oh, my God. And this is something I did not expect. So normally when you get a port job of a game or a remaster of a game, most of the time the code is no longer there, which means if I had to guess, they since this was on the Wii U, they probably still had the code lying around somewhere because throwing out the code is a lost art. Square Enix learned their lesson with Kingdom Hearts. But I like to think this was made specifically for Pikmin 3 Deluxe and this was one of the last things they did. They even blew away some of the reds, which, canonically, are the only ones that can survive that blast. Pikmin 5, you come back, it's a vegetative hellscape. Thick, sickly green vines and thorns overtaking the entirety, and then you see a gigantic 700-foot-tall Pikmin rising in the horizon. I, I would say if we didn't have the white Pikmin that caused poison damage if eaten, I would love a thorn Pikmin. That might be interesting. And then you see that huge Pikmin in the distance and its thundering footsteps. And you blow your whistle. And it turns its head. And two white eyes shine at you. And it starts stomping toward you. Dude. That would be so awesome. I'm there. A Godzilla-sized Pikmin. Maybe my ambitions are too high for Pikmin. Maybe that's why we'll never get along. But, but I like you. Oh, you meant the series. The, oh! No, no, but the, but the, we, we get along... Okay. <laughs> Checks in the mail, dude. <laughs> Thank you. I've been meaning to ask about that. <laughs> Wouldn't want another lawsuit, would we? I pay for my friendship. <laughs> <laughs> I pay for it, too. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so that is all the story of Pikmin 3 Deluxe. We had the prologue, the epilogue, and the main meat of the story. So... Next time on Pikmin 3 Deluxe, I've got one more video for you. We're going to be looking over everything else that I wanted to talk about, including Mission Mode, Bingo Battle. I hope you don't mind playing a couple rounds with me. Ah, uh, okay. But don't worry, I'll do the missions. Okay. If I do okay. the missions, I'll bring you along for Bingo Battle. Sure, that sounds fine. And then uh, any other miscellaneous topics I want to talk about, and then this game is done and I can go into Pikmin 4 and laugh like a hysteric person. What would that sound like? Yeah! <laughs>